Hey, how's it going, guys? It's me, your Death01 here, back with another video. This time, I'm bringing you guys my Resident Evil 5 All Everything Guide. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to show you how to get all of the treasures in the game. That's every single treasure that is in every single level. All of the BSA emblems, that's all 30 of them. All of the weapons, that's 27, 23 actual guns, and then four different types of explosives. And then I'm going to get you how to get infinite ammo and the best exchange points farming method that there is. Now, I know a lot of people in the past have commented on a lot of my other videos, like my uh, They All Belong to Museum guide for all the treasures, saying, oh, you missed a jewel beetle here or a sapphire pear there or a ruby, ruby square there or something. Everybody was always saying I was missing treasures, and even though I put a disclaimer in the beginning of the video, I was only doing it in the most straightforward order. Uh, people were saying I was missing stuff all the time, left, right, and center. So, in this video, I'm showing you every single treasure location that there is for each single item in the game, and I am not going to sell any of the treasures throughout the playthrough. So at the very end, you get to see what a completed playthrough collecting every single treasure will look like. Now, if you want to know how to get infinite ammo, if you want to know the best chapters for farming money and the best chapters for farming exchange points, then wait till the end of the video or skip ahead. So as you can see, this is basically a brand new save file. This is on PC. I just made this and beat this save file in order to get the infinite rocket launcher. So it could just replicate like you guys are playing through the game as well. I, I do recommend if you're going to do all of the collectibles and BSA emblems that you are on a New Game Plus save file because there are a few that you pretty much need to be New Game Plus in order to get. But if you want to do this in your regular brand new New Game playthrough, you can also try that too. All the more power to you. Now, without further ado, let's get right into Chapter 1-1. Okay, so the first thing that you can collect, which uh, you probably already knew, is right in the beginning of the game, uh, right here. It's the first weapon you get, the M92F handgun. Alright, so the next collectible, just a little bit further in the mission here. So as you can see, we're at this spot here, right at the beginning. Jumped out of the window after that guy got crazed and chased us. You're gonna have to sit here and kill the majority of the people. Once you've killed enough, enough have spawned. One guy in the back corner alleyway over there is gonna spawn with, I believe it's the Topaz Marquis. If I remember correctly and you'll know it's the right guy because you'll see a, a guy with dynamite and that's the guy that you gotta kill yep he just blew himself up <laughs> so yeah when the guy with the dynamite spawns in this back corner here you can get that pick that up that is the topaz marquee perfect first actual treasure of the game now let's move on a little bit further okay now uh just a little bit further in one one here we are uh in the standoff area i'm about to get hit okay no never mind and the executioner magin is going to come break down the gate to let you out uh just just kill him just kill him and he drops a beautiful gold ring so uh go ahead and you can pick that bad boy up now so there's a couple more things you can get in this area first and foremost sheva just picked it up but the melon piles here in the first spawn room uh, they drop grenades. There are also a couple more spawn locations for grenades, like killing the Maginis in, in this area, in the burnt down bus there, in this building right here. There are also grenades that you can get from this cabinet right here. And that would be the next collectible for you to get. Make sure you grab all types. The hand grenade, the incendiary grenade, the flash grenade, but we will be getting that one later. From this room, just jump out of this window once you've cleared the guys. And as you can see, right in the corner uh, by the gate that you're supposed to blow up, wait for Kirk to blow up here, um, there's a weapon case. So you can go ahead and pick that up. That is the first machine gun of the game, the VZ-61 machine gun. Grab that, and we can move on to chapter 1-2. So now, right near the beginning of the of 1-2 uh, here, you're going to see this broken ladder that you can do an assist jump on. Throw Sheva up there, because she's going to have to go and get the old building key, which is going to become useful in just a couple seconds. Now, once you've thrown her up there, you can just go ahead and move on. She'll catch up with you. No worries. Instead of going around this building, you're going to go into it, right? Blue doors always mean something. So break open that door, run up the stairs, and once you've come up the stairs, you're going to see this balcony right in front of you, across from you. Go out of it. Walk over to the right, and on the side of this building there, you can see there is the first BSAA emblem of the game. So go ahead, shoot that bad boy. Don't get grabbed by that guy. Uh, any more coming up the stairs? Probably. Two people are going to spawn here. Just kill them. You killed the guys that were on the balcony. Hey, look, a treasure chest. What's in there? Open that up. Antique clock. Woohoo! Treasure, treasure hunting. We're going on it. Pick that bad boy up now. We're going to jump down. We're going to do... Uh, the assisted breakdown door. The reason why you grab that old building key. 
Burning tires. Look to your left. Blue door. Wonder what it means. Let's uh, let's go check. Is it locked? Ooh, it is. Old building key. Damn. Kick that open. What's that on the wall? A shotgun. Woo! -hoo! Run over. Pick that bad boy up. All right. Now, continuing right from here. Bust open that door. You're going to want to bring out that shotgun you just got because you're going to need it. I'm going to get a cutscene. You're going to run away from her. Give you some space. All right. Kill her. Now, you're going to see. What did she drop? The only one in the game? The ivory relief. Perfect. Pick that bad boy up. Now we're just a tad bit further here. Ooh, jump scare. Oh no, scary body. Climb up this wooden ladder, right? And you're gonna have to walk across uh, this broken building, wooden bridge, but stop. You see two barrels in front of you? Stop, turn left, look up. What is that? Right by that uh, cylinder on top of there. I'm assuming it's a water barrel of some sort. BSA emblem? Shoot that. Let's move on a little bit further in the level. Now, just a tiny bit further in the game, pro strat here, tell Sheva to go. She's going to start breaking breaking barrels. It's a time save. So, come into this room, furnace room. You're going to grab this key. Pick that up, and uh, cutscene happens. We're just going to nuke this uh, Uroboros guy right here. If you want to get the gold ring that he drops, all you have to do is make sure that the final damage cannot be the furnace flames. It has to be anything other than the furnace flames. Blow up the propane tank in him, grenade him, any other way. Now, just a little bit further, we're going to use that furnace key we just grabbed. Smack this door open, run a little forward. You're going to find that dead body laying on the ground. You're going to see a, uh, a briefcase full of ammo. You're going to turn left towards the elevator. Stop! What's to your right, do you think? A BSAA emblem. Dang, right through the grates, shoot that. And now we can move on to chapter 2-1. Now, immediately after starting, there's two things to collect right away. First thing on your left, as you would all see, is the briefcase with the HNK MP5, HNK MP5 machine gun, Jesus Christ. To the right of the door you're supposed to leave in, just look to the right, a little bit more right. Hey, look at that, a BSAA emblem, right on the wall. Shoot that bad boy. And uh, if you want, in that treasure chest up there, it's just some gold. I think it's like 600 gold you get out of it, maybe, maybe less. So pick that up if you want to, climb a ladder in the back, jump across. If not, let's move on. Okay, just a little bit further in uh, chapter 2-1 here. You're going to come to this big open area. I'm just going to nuke the ground just to clear myself of that guy. The the big Majini there, you want to kill him. He's the guy that drops the item. That's the jewel bangle you want to grab. So kill him, drops the jewel bangle, pick that up. Okay, now just a little bit further in this mission, you come across this bridge, you just shot the truck down, kill all the guys that were here. Now, instead of advancing normally where the game wants you to go, down the stairwell into the sewers, stop. And uh, look to the left on the pillars holding up the bridge. You're going to see the BSA emblem right uh, right on the pillar there. So just go ahead and shoot that. And that is the uh, next emblem. Now let's move on to the next treasure we're going to get. Now, after you just came out of that tunnel where the dogs were, you're going to come out of the opening into the, uh, the free air here. And now, instead of turning right and going past those dead bodies, turn left first. And you're going to see shining right in the water. What is that? That's a sapphire pear. Pick that bad boy up. All right, now for this part, you're going to want to bring out a sniper or something. It's just easier. So I'm going to bring out my sniper. Once you've come up these stairs, turn to the right. Guy in the market. Where is he? There he is. Keep keep an eye on him. I, I'm shooting wood. Wow, that was horrible. Well, we killed him. Note that for now. But instead of going over to find out what he dropped, let's run into deep in the waters here. We're going to find another treasure hidden way in the back here by this boat. Don't know why it's here, but it is the Topaz Pear. Pick that up. Now do a 180. We're going to run out of the water right back towards where we shot that guy. We're running, we're running, we're running, we're running. Stop. Do you notice anything? Yeah, you were right. Right in the porta potty. Right in the right in the top of it. You can see the BSAA emblem. It probably reeks, but you know what? We're going to collect it. Boom. Gone. That's ours. Now, a little bit further. Stop. What do you notice? Hmm, suspicious. Let's uh, blow it up with a rocket or grenade launcher or grenade or something. And uh, let's run into the middle. What is this? A chest? Oh my gosh, it's my lucky day. Open that up. What is that? The ruby marquee. Dang. Man, we're just finding all the treasure. Now, you think we're done here? Nope. Remember that guy we killed? Well, let's run over. Let's find his body. Where did I shoot him? Ah, way over here. What is that he dropped? A diamond pair? Dang. Think about all the times that you let him run by without even killing him. Well, he drops a diamond pair. Now, you've killed him, right? You think, there's got to be nothing left here. Well, you're wrong. Follow me. So we're going to run along to the side of this building. You see this ladder, this wooden ladder? We're going to climb it, right? We're going on a little parkour mission up here. We're, uh, we're rooftop ninjas. Now, run across all the way to the other top part of the rooftop, and you're going to notice... Right on the edge here. Why? Who would leave their emerald square up here? I don't know, but uh, 
we're taking it. It's ours now. Cool. Now, we're a tad bit further in the mission. I've taken the liberty of killing all the enemies first. So, you're going to climb up this ladder where the guy is throwing Molotovs at you. It's right across from where we got that Emerald Square on the rooftop. Look forward. What's in this uh, in this window over there? A BSA emblem. Dang. Our lucky day. Shoot it. Just a tiny bit, a tiny bit further. Keep progressing where you're normally supposed to go towards the entrance here. Those two double doors where all those guys run out of. Well, you know what's in there. Probably something good. Kick the doors open. What is that? A briefcase. Dang. What is that? Open that up. The S75 rifle. Pick it up, but pick that bad boy up. Now we can move on. So now, just a little bit further in the mission, you're going to come to this spot where you have to throw Sheva across so she can go down and unlock the door because it's locked. Now, if you're smart, you would grab a grenade and you can cheese it with a grenade or a grenade launcher. Uh, but if you don't have that, then that's okay. you got to come up here anyways. But you can either do it before or after assisting her. I would do it before since then, you know, less, uh, less time wasted. On the very top third floor on the broken pillar resting there is the BSAA emblem. So go ahead and shoot that bad boy. Now just a little bit further in the mission here. Cutscene to start Chainsaw Majini. We're gonna shoot a rocket at him, blow him up. He's gonna drop the key. Um, but he's gonna he's gonna get back up again. So you wanna just run. I'm just gonna kill him so he doesn't pester us anymore. I missed. There we go. Killed him dead this time. We're gonna run forward, use that guard's key that we just got. And uh, lo and behold, look at this, a treasure chest. Let's open it up, see what we got. We got the ruby square, some gold bars, the emerald pear, the topaz pair and the sapphire square now let's uh move ahead to the next area now i hope you're ready for this uh this mission this chapter 2 too because it's chock full of stuff now once you've left the uh, original building and going to go between the train cars stop don't actually turn around and you notice right on the telephone pole way behind you is the uh bsa emblem so just wait for your reticle to line up and shoot that bad boy so instead of climbing up the ladder where you're supposed to go Run over here to the uh, edge of the building where the tracks are, and you're going to notice on the wall is a uh, drill beetle. So pick that bad boy up. Now, still in chapter 2-2 two, two here, you're going to come to the spot where you got to climb up these boxes to climb on top of the train cars. Now, instead of climbing up the ladder, just turn around opposite of the ladder. You can see the drill beetle sitting right there on this all this metal or whatever this wood is or whatever that stuff is. Pick up that drill beetle. Nice. Now, these mine shafts uh, have a lot of treasures in them, so... Make sure you keep an eye out. The first one you're going to run across is after you get out of this first patch of water. Instead of continuing on the path, look up a little bit. You're going to notice it sparkles right there. It's on the uh, wooden framing, so shoot that down. That's a uh, ruby pear. After you cross the second batch of water, you're going to come to a bridge. Now, you're going to notice it right in front of you. Right there, you can see that pear sparkling, shining. Shoot that down. But before you go ahead and grab that, turn to your right, and you're going to notice right in the waterfall there, a BSAA emblem. Bang. Shoot that bad boy. And now you can pick up that ruby pear. Okay, now just a little bit further. Instead of going to where the lights are where you got to open that gate, instead, turn to your left. You're going to see this path here. It's got uh, lanterns in it once you get a little bit of the way up. You're going to see that treasure chest. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down. We're going to open this chest, and you're going to see what's beautifully waiting for us inside. It is the diamond oval. So pick that bad boy up. Now, in this uh, big open area where the actual machinery is, uh, from the main entrance where you come out of, right there uh instead of going towards the ladders climbing up the levels turn left actually and in this little alcove where some guys have spawned right in the ground there you can see there is a flash grenade that is the third and final grenade that you need for the, the stockpile achievement now there's going to be a couple more things to collect in here now once you've climbed to the third and final ring of this uh big open drill area now instead of continuing in there you're going to look at the big oil rig right in front of you and right on the side of it on the cog there you can see that shining that is a ruby square so now drop down to the second level and we're going to run over and pick that up So now, on this uh, third ring, the third layer, after you've climbed the two ladders, uh, come in this entrance over here on the left side, or run your way around, doesn't matter. Either way, you're going to come to this open area, with tall ceiling, guys jump down from there, but you'll see there is a, uh, a, a gem right up there, a treasure. So shoot that down, sparkle in the ruby square, grab that, and now we can move on a little further. So after you've gotten that cutscene uh, with Irving and Excella and whatever running away, now, in this, uh, in this same room, same building up here, you're going to notice... These cabinets, these lockers look a little different. One's green, one's red. I wonder what that could be. Open it up, and what have we got in here? We got the Dragonov! 
Good item. Pick that bad boy up. Okay, just a little bit further. We have killed most of the guys. After you've run out of the building, you're going to come to this left side. You're going to see there's these two little ladders you can climb. You see that chest right there? I wonder what's in it. Let's run over and find out. Open that up. What is that? The diamond brilliance. Ooh, worth a pretty penny. Pick it up. Now, we're going to run a little further ahead here, and you're going to come to this long ladder that we got to climb. Now, you can see it's sparkling already, but right there, treasure on the side of the mountain. Shoot that down. I wonder what it is. Let's run over, pick it up, and see. The diamond pear. Dang. Pick it up. Now, we're going to climb this ladder like the boss that we are. Super quick, super fast, gun in hand. You know, we're too good for this, right? Now, you're probably wondering, what am I looking at? You want to pull out your sniper or something? And you're going to look way over here. See that on top of the building? What is that? A BSA emblem? Sick. Shoot that bad boy. Bang. All right. We're going to run over here. And you're going to see, you see it's sparkling already right on the side over there. You can shoot that down preemptively. Bang. You're going to have to throw Sheva up there to get it. Or you can run around and drop down yourself. Okay. Now remember that ledge where we shot down that gem? Jump down. It's going to be perched right on the ledge here. Uh, where is it? Right on the side. Yep, there we go. The diamond square. Pick that bad boy up. The next thing that you can collect is actually just in the area where the boss fight is. So you're going to start the boss fight and you'll find them scattered around in the shacks and even in some of the barrels they will spawn is the proximity bombs. Pick up those proximity bombs. They are very useful for this fight without infinite rocket launcher, but uh, we're going to make quick work of this guy because we got the rocket. So, you know, no big deal. Chapter 3-1. Probably one of the most giving chapters of all. Even right in the beginning, you got a couple treasures immediately. So, as you can see on the bullhorn right here, the bull, uh, skull, <laughs> uh, the ruby pear. So, pick that up. There's a lot of duplicates in this level. Be slate, we need that for later. And you can see shining on the tree that uh, good old brown beetle. Pick that bad boy up. From this same platform, you're gonna pull out your sniper. It's easiest from over here, I always find. Uh, make sure you have a zoom, you know, it'd be nice. And you can see the BSA emblem sitting right on the pole. Now, you can get it from other locations. I just get it from the spawn because I just it just runs into my route easier. Now, a little bit further, we're in the uh, one of the slate locations, bottom left corner of the map. And right by this tree here, there is a jewel beetle or a brown beetle. I forget what it is. Let's see. A uh, brown beetle that uh, Sheva or your co-op partner can pick up. I don't know why I'm turning this way. This is very weird. But now we're going to go on to the... Hello, game, please. Thank you. All right, now we're going to go on to the island. Right in the center platform of these three houses, there's this chest here. Open this bad boy up, and you are going to get the silver idol. Pick that up, and now we can leave this little section. So now we are in the marshland area where all the uh, crocodiles are. And instead of running towards to get the slate, on your left there, there's going to be this tree. You can see it's shining already. There is a brown beetle just uh, perched sitting right on the back of this tree. Go ahead and pick that up. So we're going to run over here right to where uh, right to where we have to go. And just in here. Ah, oh, it's right here. My bad. The ruby pear. Go ahead and pick that bad boy up. We are on the center island, which is known as the Chicken Island. Um, there's a couple things to get here. First thing you want to get is the BSA emblem that is under the the, uh, the building in the middle. So you can get it with a weapon. I'm just using a sniper so you can see it easier. You can use a, a grenade or your weapon or anything really. Rocket launcher works fine. Now, after getting that emblem, look to your left. You're going to notice right there. Look at that shining. A brown beetle. Pick that up. Now... This, uh, this, this island is known for, uh, eggs because, well, you know, all the, all the chickens run it around. So you have a chance to get golden eggs, white eggs, brown eggs, rotten eggs, all that stuff can spawn here. So you can stay here and pick them up if you want. Last thing is this treasure chest right in the center hut here. So open that up. What have we got? Another silver chalice. Cool. Okay, so now we're in chapter 3-1, and right here on the map between the poultry farm and the shaman slate, you're going to see there's this tree right here in the middle of all these spikes and barricades. There's that fish flopping around. There's the, You can see it right there shining. That is a uh, brown beetle for Sheva to pick up for you. Nice. Okay, so now we're a little bit further uh, in the island's top right corner of the map. Now, once you come off, you're going to see a couple shining things already. So, you got your uh, emerald pear right there in that skull. Go ahead, shoot that, collect that, run a little bit more forward. You can see right on that post, that uh, skull there, drop that, shoot that. Ruby pear, pick that up. Um, there is a chicken here, so you can also get some egg drops. But the last thing you're going to want to get is you have to assist jump for this. This uh, leftmost one right here. So, your partner is going to have to get thrown up there. They're going to open it up, and what are we going to get? You ready for that? Look at that. A silver idol. Cool. 
a little bit further, we are on the sunken ship, where you can see there is a weapon box that gives you the famous rocket launcher, but instead, before you grab that or after, don't matter, in the water right here, bottom of the ship, brown beetle. Pick that up. Now we can run over and get the famous rocket launcher, and you can farm this as many times as you want, just save, reload, load, whatever, etc. And uh, you can get them for bosses if you don't have infinite rocket launcher, or you can sell them. It's uh, decent money, but there are better money-making methods in this game. All right, top northwest uh, portion of the map. We're going to come in immediately right in the hut in front of you. BSA emblem showing itself loud and proud. Shoot that bad boy. Now, next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to jump in this water. Don't worry, no crocodiles, no nothing in here. Turn around. Brown beetle. Hey, another one. Pick that bad boy up now. Climb up on top of that platform. Run around. You're going to climb the ladder. And you know what's at the end? Look at that. A beautiful treasure chest. So we're going to run over. Open that up. Guess what's going to be in it? Look at that. Another silver chalice. Perfect. All right. We just walked through the door. Drop down into the muddy water. Oh, gross. Is there an alligator or something in here? Nope. Turn around, though. Look what that is. A BSA emblem hid it under the doorway. Dang. Shoot that. Bang. Now, just a tad bit further, you're going to come to this open area. Take the right side. You're going to see a dead body, something shiny. What is that? Is that a gun? That is a gun. We're going to grab it. But guess what? You're going to get ambushed. So be prepared. I'm showing you what happens when you walk in. You get separated and bang. Never mind. She's in here with me. That's uh, insane. Normally she never is. But just shoot a rocket or kill them all. That's okay. You can walk around. Pick up the Smith & Wesson M29 Magnum. Heck yeah. So these big guys that come at you. Uh, those big guys, that big guy with the malice, uh, or the, the mace, I, I don't know why I mixed two words there. So you blow him up, you kill him, do anything you can to get rid of him, and he is gonna drop you a special, special little gem. Kill him too. Shoot him to the ground, dead. Look with that, the blue enigma, one and only. Pick that bad boy up, let's go collect it from the other body. Okay, after you've gone across the bridge, open the uh, door for Sheva. Kick it open for her like a gentleman. Now, instead of leaving, you see really quick, right by the store, there's a jewel beetle hiding way in the back there. Pick that bad boy up. Now, follow me. Let's run a little further. Now, you're supposed to go left to go for the, uh, you know, to take the tram and leave here. But you know what? Come come in this, come in this little uh, cave first. And look at that, a treasure chest. What's in here, you think? Look at that. We got the beautiful ceremonial mask. Perfect. Take that, and now we can move on to the next chapter. All right, now, while you're going through these caves, uh, you'll notice that each of these lights shines a little bit, so just shoot it, and it's going to drop a treasure. This one drops a ruby pear, so pick that up. Shoot the next light. That's going to drop a treasure. Let's see what that one is. That one's going to be, what is that, a sapphire square? Nice, pick that up. And now let's just advance a little bit further in this area. Now, once you reach these tents, you're going to notice that there's something special about them. It's actually between them. You got to go around the edge. If you have a rocket, you could just shoot it from the side where I was or a grenade. But you can see hidden right behind the sandbags between the two tents is the BSAA emblem. So shoot that bad boy. Bam. And now once you've got that BSAA emblem, you're going to notice this uh, oil flame right here. These two barrels, right? And right in the middle of them, there is a jewel beetle sitting on the barrel. So go ahead and pick that bad boy up. Yeah. Just a little bit further ahead, you're going to notice all the oil rigs and everything. Instead of going into it, you saw that shine already if you were paying attention, but on the cliff behind the main doors, look at that, a treasure. Shoot that down, what is that? A nice ruby square. Mmm, pick that up. Okay, so you turn the first valve to shut off the flames over there. Now, instead of continuing on down there where the enemies are, just come around to the back side of it, and you're going to see right over here on the back side is a jewel beetle just sitting on the metal there. So pick that up. Nice. Now, there's going to be two instances of enemies here that you are going to get a Venom Vang from. So, once you first take that, you're going to see the uh, Chainsaw Machine he's going to spawn. I'm just going to wait for him to drop down so I can kill him and get the uh, Venom Vang. So, he's going to drop down. Just going to shoot a rocket down there. That's going to kill him. Going to drop down, run over, and you can see the Venom Fang sitting on the ground. So, go ahead and pick that up. Now, once you open this door up, take the blockade away. Get away from that uh, door, please, Sheva. All right, boom. Shoot him with a rocket, kill him, however you want to. Gonna pick up that Venom Fang. He's gonna stand up again because it's... Now, when you're helping uh, defend Josh so he can break into the computer, these two big, uh, the big fat Maginis are gonna spawn. Let's just let them both walk through the door and you're gonna wanna kill them both. 
because they are gonna drop uh, Jewel Bangle and Jewel Bangle. Okay, now, once Josh is trying to unlock the next uh, computer to get the door open, that Chainsaw Majini's gonna spawn, so just let him come at you. You're gonna wanna kill him. But he drops a gold ring. So go ahead and pick up that gold ring. Okay, so now immediately after getting that cutscene from Josh, uh, I'm just gonna shoot a rocket to make it easier. Turn around, open up this door, and guess what we're gonna find inside? The SA emblem. Nice. Shoot that bad boy. And now let's go ahead and uh, get our next treasure. So just run forward. Bunch of guys are gonna spawn here. Just, uh, you know, give them a what for like that. Door's gonna open now. They're gonna come right out of that room right in front of you. So just go ahead and shoot a rocket or grenade or anything you got to blow them up. Dog lived, but that's okay. Now we killed that big Majenny, and you see what he's gonna drop? He's gonna drop a beautiful gold ring. Pick that up. And now we can move on to the next chapter. Now the next collectible is right at the beginning of the mission. You're gonna be coming under this, uh, under that uh, archway. You can still get it if you don't shoot it immediately from the spawn, but it's the first stop you make when you're on the boat. So, pull out your sniper, pistol, whatever you want to do, and go ahead and shoot that BSA emblem. Now, after you get off the boat in this area, you can see there's the uh, the two machine guns up there and the guys spawning up there. Um, you're going to want to run way to the back, like where you came from. You're going to run, run along all these wooden pieces of docking, and you'll see in this green shack right at the very back, is gonna be a weapons case. Nice, let's open it up. What did we get? The M3 shotgun. Heck yeah. I would advise you to do this before pulling the levers, but you come up to here where the machine gun, machine guns are, there's this little bunker, little doorway. Blue door always means something good, so kick that bad boy open. We're gonna walk in, you're like, I don't know what's so special about this room. Well, what is in this cabinet you say? Let's open the drawer. Dang, what is that? Oh my gosh, an emerald marquee? Woo, only one of the game. Let's pick it up. Heck yeah, now let's move on. Okay, now chapter 4-1. Instead of climbing up the ladder on the way you're supposed to go, run back past it and you're gonna notice this little alcove back here. You're gonna climb up top and what is this? A chest. Dang, let's open it up, see what happens. What have we got? A topaz trilliant. Oh, so beautiful. Pick it up, do a 180. And look, right there, what is that? A gem, dang. Shoot it down, jump down. What do you think it is? A sapphire pear. Ooh, we nearly. More uh, spiders are gonna spawn, whatever, just run past them. They're not your uh, troubles. Now, climb this ladder, right? Because spiders can't climb ladders, obviously. Shoot this one in front of you if you wanna live. He's very annoying. Now, run, stop. Instead of crossing the bridge, remember where we've seen this before? A BSAA emblem across a bridge near a waterfall, dang. Grab that BSAA emblem, now. A little bit further down the path, you're gonna notice, hey, shiny, I bet you there's one in every single lantern you can find. So shoot it, emerald pear, pick it up. Running down, a bunch of spiders are gonna come creepy crawling, whatever, blow them up, who cares, they're none of your concern. Shoot them all dead, I blew this up with the rocket by mistake, but in that one too, sapphire square, pick that up. More creepy crawlies, let's just shoot them all, have a rocket, enjoy some... Enjoy some of that tasty crunch. Now, what is this? A skull. Pick it up. A ruby pear. To your left, a skull. Pick it up. Sapphire pear. Right in front of you, another lantern. Look at that topaz pear. Now, a little bit further and still in 4-1. There's so many treasures in this level, so you gotta keep your eye out everywhere. But right above this pillar, as you're gonna walk through, shoot it. Dang, topaz square. Pick that up. A tiny bit further, right there in the fire. Very common place, emerald pear. They just like to, they, they like to keep them hot. Now, a tiny bit further on this staircase, look at that, another treasure and a fire, topaz pear. Some guys coming out of a room, no big deal. Blow those bad boys up. Get Sheva to help you open up that tomb, and what's in there immediately? A sapphire square, dang. Sapphire pear as well, I, so, sorry, I moved, there we go, sapphire pear. Now, come to the other room, and we're gonna see, what is this? Another fire. Another gem hidden in it. Yep, look at that. Sapphire pear. Immediately clutched in the dead guy's hands. What do we think that is? Mummy and a sarcophagus? We got a ruby pear. Nice. Open that sarcophagus up. Oh no, we're gonna fall. Quick time. We land on our feet like cats, because we're sick. Just gonna do that. 
All right, now each one of these has a treasure in it. So take your pick on which one you want to go to first. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to choose this one. This guy is dead. Okay. Pick each piece of the cross and you get a new trillion. This one is the emerald. Now let's go to the one that's straight behind the exit. We got a ruby trillion. All right, and the last one, I think it's a sapphire. Yep. The sapphire trillion. Woohoo! We are so good now. Immediately from the cross, heading towards where the door opened, you're going to notice something in the distance. You can see it already shining. What is that? Yeah, you guessed it. A BSAA emblem. Sniped! Now we're at the gravy and potatoes. Now, once you've uh, first opened up the stairwell and came into this big area, you can get this BSAA emblem anytime, but I'm just going to show it to you now because it's easiest. Look to your left. Right up there on some rubble. You can shoot that emblem nice and easy. Bam! Now, this uh, this area has tons of treasures, so just uh, bear with me. Now, the next thing you want to get in this area before you pull the first chain, because it's going to block it off. Turn to your left. What is that? Gun case. Oh my gosh, what could it be? What could it be? What could it be? Grenade launcher. Heck yeah. Now, after you just grab the grenade launcher, do a 180. We're going to run over here to pull the chain, but not quite yet. You saw it glimmering already, probably, but... Instead of pulling the first chain, look up. You're going to see it right on the rubble there. Beautiful emerald square. Shoot that down. Pick that up. Under every statue in here is a treasure. So make sure that once you pull the statue, you're going to pick up the treasure at each one. So this one is going to be the sapphire square. Now, coming up to the second statue, we are going to pull this chain first. Skip the cutscene. We got an emerald square. Nice. Pick that up. Turn around. Uh, instead of continuing forward, come to this little side path, and you're going to notice a treasure chest. Jump across, open it up, and we got the gold idol. Heck yeah. Now you just got into a big kerfluffle with a bunch of guys coming at you with spears shooting at you. On the second level, you can see it already in the distance. There is a treasure up there. You can uh, just run, or run along the path. You might want to kill the guys. It'll be a little annoying if you don't first. Shoot it down, and we can pick up our... Eh, hello, please, thank you. Our very precious topaz square. Heck yeah. All right, next statue we got is this uh, golden one or bronze one, whatever color you want to call this. Pull that bad boy, going to recede, and we're going to get another topaz square. Perfect. Now, you're going to run over here. You're going to put Sheva on the top one. You're going to go down to the bottom one. And make sure that uh, okay, once you get her to pull it, that you come back up here and get the, get the gem, because they all drop one. So now the treasure you get from the bottom one is going to be a ruby pear. And the treasure you get from the top one is going to be a sapphire pear. Pick that up. And now we move on to two of the last treasures in this level. Okay, now we're going to pull this final statue right here. So get ready with me, Sheva. Pull this chain. Three, two, one. Uh, let's go. All right, it's going to recede. Recess in. We get the ruby oval. Pick that up. Now do a 180. You're going to get a cutscene to start. And you got to kill this big flying guy. I forget his name. But you got to kill him. Not from the pillars running up the stairs, the quick time event. You gotta kill them down here. So use your proximity mines, use your rocket launcher, use a grenade launcher, use anything you can, and this will drop you the soul gem. Pick that bad boy up. We are done with this level. Let's move on. Now, after picking up one of the shaman slates, uh, one of these big guys is gonna spawn again. So just go ahead and kill that guy. He's gonna drop another uh, blue enigma for you. Look at that beautiful blue enigma. Now, as you may have guessed, there's going to be a lot of treasures in this one, too. Namely, in spots where it's hidden above you on a wall or in a flame, like so. So shoot that flame. Look at that topaz square. Under the bridge right here, in between the two laser beams, the main walkway to get out of here, you're going to see a treasure. Shoot that down. Pick that up. That's the ruby pear. We're going to shove Sheva across, as usual. We're going to protect her, and another one of those big Maginis, tribal Maginis, is going to spawn again. So we're going to kill them uh, and get another blue enigma. There's there's the big one, chasing Sheva. Got no enemies coming behind us. Perfect. Let's, let's get, let's get, let them get a little closer, you know. Okay, you're dead. Drop that blue enigma for me, my buddy. Thank you. Look at that, another blue enigma. Let's keep going. We're going to go a little further. Come around this little walkway. What do we got? Little treasure hidden in the corner here. Shoot that. Another flame. One emerald pear. Perfect. Okay, now coming up to the third and final slate right there. The burning um, tower one or whatever that is. Uh, you're going to run and you're going to notice 
right here on the ground. A sapphire pair for picking up. Perfect. Okay, now we're on the main level again, running back to the main platform. And you're going to notice in these alcoves, like on the right side over there, another fire. Shoot that bad boy. What have we got? Sapphire square. Dang, more treasure. Now, after inserting all the emblems and coming up to these main uh, ancient inscribed doors, you saw it shining already. Look at that right there. Shoot that bad boy down. And we got the diamond trillion. Good job. So I forgot to have it recording, um, but in this second pillar room or sunbeam room, puzzle room, up up on that platform, there is a free ruby pair that Sheva will always grab for you. So yeah, now we are in the third and last puzzle room. So the first thing you're going to want to do is arrange them. So when you move that last one, it shoots directly into the skeleton's mouth in the middle. That's going to open up the two side doors. Now, first thing you want to do is go behind that skeleton into this room with the spike body, turn around. And directly above the pillar is the BSA emblem. Nice. Now we're going to spin this dial. Spin the mirror. It's going to go kablam. It's going to give you a cutscene. It's going to open up the two sides. You saw that uh, golden idol. And you're also going to get a golden beetle and a couple other things. So, coming to this room first. Well, it doesn't really matter which room. I'm just going to blow these all up with the rocket to make it easy. Now you can see drop some eggs, drop some stuff. There's some gold emerald pear. You're going to pick that up from the blown up skull. There's a ruby pear you're going to pick up. You're also going to get this beautiful gold idol. Nice. Now we're going to do go straight, straight across. You want to run on the right side. We're going to run all the way across. And we're going to find a golden beetle. So as you can see, burning guy. Golden beetle right on that uh, broken tombstone or whatever it is. Cool. Pick that up. Cool. So now, immediately after spawning... You'd think you just run ahead, but nope. First thing you're going to want to do is do with 180. Boom. Shoot that treasure off the uh, top there. Ruby square. Dang, mine now. Now we're going to run all the way over to the right side. Because something's going to be hiding for us over here. Can you guess what it is? You guessed it. BSA emblem. Cool. Shoot that bad boy. And now the complete opposite side of where we got the BSA emblem from. you got to run all the way around. And right on the ground here, you're going to notice a beautiful jewel beetle. Yay, add to my insect collection. Okay, now, liquors. These guys are gonna get you the best profits you have ever had. So that one dropped money. That one that we just blew up should drop a power stone. Or Lionheart, sorry, my bad. Good old Lionheart. But after you've killed those two, instead of continuing up the stairs, all the other rooms in this area were garbage. But this room is pretty good, so if you kick the door down, you're gonna notice, hey, look. Cool, I got a green-red uh, mixture now, but... Oh my god, a safe! Oh my god, a weapon case! Open that up. What have we got? We got the AK-74. My bad, AK-74. Heck yeah! Good gun, pick that up. And you just got some gold bars, but still worth it. So now, for killing all these liquors, it's, it's a lot easier to just train them all into this hallway. So go over there, run past them all, call the elevator, and it just starts shooting rockets. So I think there's one or two alive. So we got one lion heart. We got some money. Yeah, there's still some more alive way back there. Uh, two lion hearts. And now another farming spot for lion hearts. All these liquors in these halls, they uh, they can drop you a lion heart. Look at that lion heart. I think like 14 or total spawn here. So, you know. It gives you a chance to get busy and uh, make quite a bit of money. Okay, so a little bit further in this uh, chapter now, we're going to come to this area where there's this second conveyor belt, that, or well, I guess the third conveyor belt that you have to ride on. This one has the, uh, you know, the furnace back there, all the dead bodies on it, the gun case over there. But there's this dumpster right to your left, right over here. You're going to notice what's in it? A BSA emblem. Now, if you want to get it, you need to basically be Chris in order to shoot it. Um, or you just throw a grenade in there if you're Sheva or a rocket launcher or something, but that's, uh, the BSA emblem. Pretty well hidden. Now we're gonna come over here. We're gonna open this up. What do you think we get here? Good. The SIG 556. Stop giving me handgun ammo, Sheva. The SIG 556 machine gun. Pick that bad boy up. Now, after you get that gun, we gotta restore power to this, uh, conveyor belt. So we're gonna run a little forward, and we're gonna encounter the next treasure that we can collect. So after restoring the power and getting the cutscene, you hear that creepy, uh, something spawns, right? You can hear him. Usually one will drop here for sure. That's the, uh, Reaper. Just go ahead and shoot him with your rocket. He blows up super quick, and you get a nice power stone. Now, for the conveyor belt here, you can technically just farm money off of these guys, because... 
they drop the uh, the dead bride's necklace, like like so. Um, it's hard to see, but uh, this will infinitely spawn these dead bodies and the dead bride necklaces. So if you want to, you could just sit here and farm it. Um, it's not really that fun, you can see there. And you can avoid him from grabbing you by just picking it up. But, you know, to each their own. Alright, so we are right in the beginning of Chapter 5-3. And you can see it already, the BSA emblem behind the fan. It's right when you start off here, so... Oh my... <laughs> yeah, shoot that. Okay, now we're going to climb the ladder. Follow me over here. Instead of going to where you're supposed to go, we're going to follow down this hallway. Why? Well, you probably guessed it. There's something in here. Otherwise, I wouldn't bring you this way. Now, you come in the room, you're like, I just see shells, whatever, nothing, x-rays. Oh, dang, a safe. What is in there? Open that up. What do we got? The sapphire marquee. Dang, pick that up. All right, now we're a little bit later. Um... After we uh, went down that hallway, continuing the path we we're supposed to go. Now, I'm on veteran, so, uh, you know, extra reavers are going to spawn. But there's going to be a couple reavers that spawn here. They all drop power stones. So, yeah, I give them a shot. Second power reaver. I mean, uh, reaver. Reaper. Oh, my gosh. Second reaper. Jeez. Yeah, kill that reaper. Another power stone. So, anyways, you got to come in here to turn the power on. But immediately to your right, there is a gun case. Nice. What's in that gun case? Let's open it up. The beautiful HNK PSG-1 rifle. Best sniper rifle in the game. We got a big guy on there, so once you kill him, his jewel bangle is going to spawn on the other side over there. That's okay. And here is that uh, jewel bangle I talked about when you killed the guy. Spawns over here. Pick that up, and now we're going to kill a couple more guys and get a couple more treasures. All right, you've killed all the rocket guys um, coming up into this room. You're going to go through that main door to continue on. But instead, you notice on the tables in this uh, command center control room, whatever this is, the royal necklace. Pick that bad boy up. Now, this is the fun part. When you're riding around in the circles, the first control platform that stops you from uh, going up, that's the one with the BSAA emblem on it. So they're shooting at me right now, but I'm just going to shoot a rocket over there. It'll kill him and get the emblem. There we go. Uh, if you don't have a rocket or anything explosive, then you can shoot it. Uh, I would personally just wait until you get to the second round control platform that slows you down. Then you can just stand on the edge and shoot it from above. It gives you a much clearer angle to get it. Okay, now you just finished riding up that um, merry-go-round to get up. You went through the double doors, and you're coming into this area where there's this big, big building in front of you in this cave. Now, instead of continuing where you're supposed to go, stop. Look up, you can see that shining right there. The one and only Ruby Brilliant. Make sure you pick that bad boy up. Directly from that, walking into this uh, open area. So, the next thing we're going to get is right there in this elevator shaft. So run around to the back side, which is easiest to see it. And right on the side there of the channel is the BSAA emblem. Shoot that bad boy. And now we just got to skip a little bit ahead, so I'm going to turn the power on, and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so after you've thrown Sheva up there and killed all of the liquors, um, I didn't want to deal with them, so I just shot them all off from falling. But if you want to collect the line hearts, you can let them all climb on and kill them, and, you know, you'll get a couple line hearts out of it. But anyways, in this room where you uh, pull the lever to drop the bridge down, you can see in this uh, locker closest to the wall is the gold chalice. So pick up that gold chalice. And now we're going to go ahead just a tiny bit further. We're going to go on the path we're supposed to go. You can already see it shining. I'm sure you saw it from a long time ago. But there is a treasure right above the doorway. Boom. Shoot that guy down. What did we get? We get the Topaz Brilliant. Beautiful. Pick that up. And now we're going into the Jill and Wesker fight. All right. So now in the Jill and Wesker fight, there's a couple things you have to do. First thing, you're going to get yourself kicked through the door. Come into this room in the back. And in this uh, pot... On the right side in the doorway is the Sapphire Oval. Pick that bad boy up. Now, run into the next room of these two. Come here, Sheva, please. And you're going to push this tomb open very specifically. Why? Because you're about to get the single-handedly, well, the second best gun in the game, apart from the rocket launcher, and some treasures. So you get the L-Hawk, you get the Sapphire Brilliant, and you're going to get an Emerald Oval. Beautiful. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to damage Wesker and beat him within the seven minutes mark. There we go. Perfect. And that's what you have to do uh, to Wesker. You got to shoot a rocket in his face, make him grab it when he's not looking at you, shoot it. And now he's going to run away and you're going to be able to collect the next collectible. As long as Sheva doesn't die. 
Um, okay, perfect. Now, I gotta heal her right away. So, now there's two things you want to get in here. The first thing is you're gonna want to run to the left side. Run all the way over here. And you're gonna want to break... This, uh... This vase, and that's gonna get you the Emerald Brilliant. Perfect. Pick that up. Let's try not to get killed by Jill here. From, uh, making Wesker run away, spawns right in the center of the doorways here. The good old Heart of Africa. Pick that up, and now you can continue on with your Jill fight. Okay, now, immediately after spawning, what you're gonna want to do is take out your sniper. You're gonna want to turn to your right, do a 90 degree. You're gonna see way in the distance. Well, I mean, you're gonna see these guys. That's uh, no big deal. But way in the distance, see that? Way up there, BSA emblem. Mint. All you gotta do is just uh, try to line your scope up with it a little bit. There we go, perfect. Okay, now, just a little bit further in chapter 6, 1 here. You're gonna come to the spot where you gotta climb this ladder, and you're near this uh, big watchtower, and you gotta jump down. Instead, turn around, and you'll notice right on the top of the crane, way in the distance, there are two Maginis that are standing way up there. Now, you gotta kill them and make them fall off there in order to get the treasure. So I advise shooting the leg like that, just to knock them right off, sends them flying, boom. They're gonna fall, look at that, and then you're gonna be able to go over there and collect what they drop. Didn't realize that uh, this guy came already, but I accidentally killed him with a rocket and uh, picked up the jewel bangle. But he drops the jewel bangle, so grab that. Now you're going to come to this spot um, right before Sheva gets captured or before you push this block. Now you can kill him from the spawn or you can kill him now. I choose to do it now because you are you got to wait for Sheva when she's climbing the ladder anyways. But this guy over here takes one shot to kill if I could land it. You gotta kill him now. You can't do it after you've gone through the sequence because then he will be despawned. But you kill him now, you can see you drop something. We'll get that in a minute. Now, you can do it now or after Sheva gets uh, trapped, which she's gonna trap herself in. That's fine, you get spawned down here automatically. Up there, up there is a, um, is a BSA emblem. So I'm just gonna shoot a rock in there for you to see. But all you do is go Kablawi and BSA emblem is yours. And now we can go get that uh, treasure I was talking you, to you about earlier. So, just after you've used the crane key card and you're going up to uh, use the crane to free Sheva, that guy we killed, right here, well, go to look at his body, look at that Topaz Oval. Mmm, mint. Pick that bad boy up. And now, once you've freed Sheva and you're gonna climb this ladder to continue on and progress, normally you're gonna notice there is a Topaz Oval from one of the Maginis that you shot down from up top. Pick that up. Now, just a tiny bit ahead, after you've climbed up the ladder and freed Sheva, this opens up now. All this uh, has in here is gold, the same as the one gold bars here, and that one down there also has gold bars. And the second Topaz oval that you get for shooting them down is right here in between the two platforms where the big Maginis are. So jump down, run over, and pick up that third Topaz oval of the level. We're gonna have two big, uh, big Magini guys, Magini guys spawn. Uh, one's gonna spawn on Sheva, so I'm just gonna kill him, send her up, and then uh, another one will spawn to come after me. You can see his dead body's down there with the jewel bangle, so if you want, you can always go down there and get them, but I'm gonna ignore them. I don't feel like going down. Now, once you've gotten to the bottom of these big stairwell, all the, all these, all these uh, flights of stairs, and Sheva's talking about what we did to piss Wesker off, you're gonna notice right at the bottom there is a weapons briefcase here, so you're gonna open that, and we're getting the last weapon of the game, the Jailbreaker. Let's go. Pew pew! And now for the 30th and final emblem in Chapter 6-1. It's just after that cutscene when you got the Jailbreaker. Uh, you're, you spawn in this room with all these flowers in it. You can shoot the glass if you want to, just to celebrate. But, as you noticed, to the right, up in that cabinet, just sitting there, perched uh, right up there. Shoot through the glass, and that final emblem is yours! Woohoo! All the emblems are done! Okay, after using the key cards, you come into this area where these guys are shooting at you with rocket launchers. Now, those dead bride necklaces that uh, we were farming earlier, Oops, these are also uh, collectible from here, so you can farm them on that conveyor belt. These are also another location you can get them from. The rocket launcher, um, Maginis, they spawn the dead bride necklaces, so they're each one you kill here drops one. So one was there, one's going to be right here. So let's move on to the next area. We are now in chapter 6-2, which is the best for farming exchange points. Just play this through on professional with an infinite rocket launcher, and you get uh, a lot of exchange points real quick. Now, 
And the first actual room that you walk into with all of these uh, organizers and a couple lockers in the back there, right? You're going to walk up to the very back locker and what's in it? Beautiful, a golden chalice. Nice. All right, we're on the second floor here now. This is where that hallway of dead guys are. Now, instead of continuing forward, come into this doorway real quick first. Kick that door open in the boardroom here. And you can notice there's a whole lot of nothing. But there is some la um, some lockers on the left side here. So right in the middle, guess what we got? Yep, another gold chalice. Pick that up. Now let's keep going. Okay, now in this second part of 6-3, a bunch of reapers are going to spawn. So here's another spot to farm some money. Get some... Power stones. Kill that one. Wait for the other one to, to make its way over here. You know, it likes to take its sweet time. It's pretty quick, but uh, yeah, let it jump down. Let it get a little close so you don't got to run too far. Kablawi. You're done. That's one power stone. That's two power stones. Now, climb up top with me. There was that uh, rocket launcher Majini that was shooting at us the entire time on this bridge part up here. So if you climb up top, look in the center of the bridge. And you will see another dead bride's necklace. Mint! And now it's time for the final collectible of the game. That is the diamond... Uh, brilliant? Or no, something like that. I forget what it's called. Anyways, you gotta break that with an explosive. Once it's broken and you fall, uh, you wanna run over there immediately. You wanna run over, jump across the rubble that you broke down, and you can collect the final treasure of the game. If Wesker would stop talking, I could show you the name. The Diamond Marquee. Right, the Diamond Marquee. Final treasure of the game. Pick that bad boy up. And now you should be able to just cheese Wesker with a uh, rocket. If I can aim properly. I guess I'll go punch a boulder, you know. Move this ginormous, like, millions of tons worth of rock. Oh yeah, look at all the hook, 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 ram. Damn! Chris can move boulders, man. Wesker ain't got nothing on me. Too strong, baby. Too strong. There we go. Oh my god, he was he was blocking all those shots. Suck on this, Wesker. Bam! Let's get it, let's get it. Right through the face. Saw that Taurus face off. So that is Resident Evil 5. That was the entire game, pretty much all the collectibles that you can get, all the weapons, all the BSAA emblem. This is roughly what your treasure count should look like at the end of the full playthrough. Plus or minus a jewel bangle and lion hearts and maybe the uh, power stones. But this is essentially what a complete playthrough of Resident Evil 5 will net you. That's what it should look like for those three rows. That's what it should look like for those three rows. And that's what it should look like for the final three rows. Now, let's see what all that's worth. A full playthrough nets you $279,000, which is a lot, but also not that much. You can, you can burn through a lot of money real quick. So doing a full game playthrough, collecting every single treasure is not worth your time. You're better off farming line hearts. Now, you're probably wondering, well, I followed your guide completely, and I still don't have the stockpile achievement. What weapons am I missing? Well, there are only certain weapons that you can get through purchasing through the store. Now, in order to unlock most of these weapons, you have to fully upgrade the first gun in each respective gun class. So, in order to unlock the special weapon here, the M93R handgun, and they're all 30,000, except for the Gatling gun and longbow, in order to unlock the M93R three-round burst handgun, you have to fully upgrade the M92F handgun, the first gun that you get in the game. Now, in order to unlock the Hydra, $30,000, you have to fully upgrade the Ithaca M37 shotgun. Now, the VZ61, when you fully upgrade that, you will unlock the ability to purchase the Gatling gun, which is a Chris specific weapon only. Only Chris can use this gun. Once you've fully upgraded the S75 rifle, you will unlock the Sheva specific weapon, which is the longbow, meaning only Sheva can use this weapon. And finally, in order to unlock the Smith & Wesson M500 Magnum, you have to fully upgrade 
you probably guessed it, the Smith & Wesson M29 Magnum. But that's not it. We still have to get the Stun Rod. Now the Stun Rod is available for purchase once you've completed Chapter 2-3 at any time for $3,000, never changes. That's awesome. And the final thing that you need to make sure that you have is the Proximity Bomb, which you can purchase in the store. Or you can also collect it in various different chapters throughout the game. And once you have all of those, including the three explosives that I got you to collect in the beginning of the game, which you also get throughout the game, the hand grenade, the incendiary grenade, and the flash grenade. Once you have all of those in your inventory, you will have finally unlocked the stockpile achievement. And now for infinite ammo. The only two requirements to be able to unlock the ability to use infinite ammo is to have completed the game entirely on any difficulty and to have fully upgraded the weapon of choice that you want to use infinite ammo for. Now for the rocket launcher, the only requirement for it is to have beaten the game and to have done it in under five hours. Once you have beaten the game under five hours, then you will automatically unlock the infinite rocket launcher. Now you're probably wondering, well, that sounds sick. I see runners using it all the time. How do I turn it on? Well, easy. First thing you want to do is you want to go to special settings. This here, you're going to have this new selection here, Infinite Ammo, the third one. You're going to click on that. You're going to come in here. This is automatically going to be set to off. You want to turn the Infinite Ammo mode selection to on. Perfect. Make sure you hit OK. Save that selection. Now we're going to go back. Now for the weapons that you have completely upgraded. So as you can see, this M92F, I have purchased all available upgrades. Just like with this HNK PSG1, you have purchased all available upgrades. Now you're probably wondering, well, I did that. Now how do I get the infinite ammo? Well, the next step is to go to bonus features. Yep, that's right. In bonus features, you see how you get these exchange points for completing chapters. You see it at the end of every mission, you get a rank, right? You're going to scroll all the way down to the bonus feature section. And you're going to notice a bunch of question marks, except there's going to be, there's going to be weapon names here that are written out. So the Ithaca M37 Infinite Ammo, it costs you 8,000 exchange points. So this is where you go. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of bonus features, and you can now purchase the ability to use Infinite Ammo for that specific weapon that you fully upgraded. Now, a lot of the expensive ones, like the S75, the HNK, they cost 15,000. A lot of the lower weapons, like the M92F, is I believe this was 6,000, the Ithaca is 8,000. The Magnums can be, I believe, up to 20,000. So they do vary, but this is where you go to purchase the infinite ammo. Once you've purchased that infinite ammo, there is only one more step that you need to do, and that is when you go to start a new game. So I'm going to hit continue. I'm going to load up chapter 5-1. And now in the network settings here, there's going to be this fourth selection you can choose from infinite ammo. It's automatically going to be set to no. You want to make sure that you turn that to yes. And that means when you load into the game, you will now be able to use your infinite ammo. Look at that infinite ammo on the M92F pistol, infinite ammo on the HNK PSG-1 sniper, infinite ammo on the rocket launcher. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to show you guys the fastest money making method there is in Resident Evil 5, which is farming chapter 5-1. Now you can see I'm at $40,000. I'm going to do this in real time so you can see just how quick you can make money in this chapter. So you're going to start... And you're just gonna you're just gonna skip everything. You're the main the main priority of this chapter is to kill the liquors and get the safe gold. And that's that's really all you do. It's only gonna take you a couple minutes, and on average per run, you're probably gonna get about twelve thousand dollars. Nope. Now, it is recommended for this playthrough that you have a rocket launcher because it's just going to kill them a lot quicker. Like, you're not going to have that fun of a time trying to kill them without a rocket launcher. So, Sheva's picking up whatever that was, 200 gold there. This one always drops you a Lionheart, the one that's sitting in the back. The one that always jumps out is the one that drops the money. So now, once you've encountered the first two liquors, you're going to come through. You're going to open up this door on the right. 
you're going to run in. You can grab that red herb if you want, but you want to grab the $3,000 of gold bars in the safe. You can grab the AK-74 if you want to get some extra money for selling the gun, and you also get some machine gun ammo out of it too. Now you're going to get this checkpoint. That's all fine and dandy. You're going to run up the stairs, and you're going to proceed into the area where we get swarmed by a whole horde of liquors. Now, you're going to want to kill all of the ones in their holding cells here first, and then you're going to run and call the elevator to cause the second wave to spawn. These guys can get bunched up in the doorways, so that's why you want to kill them now. You don't want to wait for them to, to chase you later. You just want to kill them now. Get it out of the way. Get it over and done with. There we go. That's one lion heart. And you're going to pick up all the money they drop too. Now, you can do this on Professional to double the gold drop. Because on Professional, the amount of gold drop is doubled. The actual value of treasures and everything is the same. That never changes. So these two have spawned. We killed them. Going to drop some gold and some gold. That's fine. You're going to kick this door open with Sheva. You're going to run, call the elevator. And then you're going to want to kill the remaining ones that come. So let's just make our way down here. You want to let them actually come through the vents. So you want to let them get to at least this corner before you start killing them. Otherwise, uh, you don't want to kill them when they're in the vents. You won't get the item that way. And you'll know you've killed the last one when the music stops. Perfect. So we got one more lion heart. La elevator is finally here. We got the last bit of gold. And now all you're going to do is quit. You're going to save and quit. It's going to give you uh, all that money. You're going to start up again. Go to continue. Load the chapter. Hit start game. And then you're going to repeat the process over again. So, all in all, the AK gets you $400. We got... Uh, four thousand dollars just in gold and then as well from the treasures we also got four lion hearts that time so that's ten thousand dollars so in about three and a half minutes let's let's just let's just topside four minutes in four minutes you got fourteen thousand dollars so as you can see chapter 6-2 on professional difficulty is going to get you the most amount of exchange points you can get in the quickest time possible it's going to get you 2500 exchange points every about three and a half minutes and over an hour this will get you about 40,000 exchange points for the average person now i would say that's pretty dang good considering if you're doing s ranks on amateur and doing the whole game you're only going to get about 15,000 points so thank you guys for watching make sure to like favorite share and subscribe if you did enjoy keep it real guys and i'll see you in my next video peace